Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark. Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to The Mr. Mortgage Show, and you, my friend, are in the right place if you want the data, the information, the real news, right? Not the headlines. We dig deep into it to give you all of the data that you need to make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. And just like the announcer said, we do put the fun in funding. We try to make all this fun because I get it. Statistics, numbers, news, that's not fun for anybody. So we try to put a little spin on it. But uh, yeah, you are in the right place for all that stuff. We always answer your questions too. I'll give you the anytime hotline here in a minute so you can call or text your questions to us. Dom, my producer, the man himself, is uh, manning that phone line in the uh, text line and the email. He'll get your questions on the air. So let me go ahead and throw that out there right now while I'm thinking about it because we have a brand new anytime hotline it's toll free 855-462-7292 that's 855-462-7292 and uh, you're asking hey why toll free i don't think you guys are a bunch of cheapskates and you can't afford the call in <laughs> the mr mortgage show is expanding we are um, still based right here locally we're still in town but we've always served the entire state and um we are adding stations to our syndicated network. So we've got brand new listeners. Hello, brand new listeners from other areas of the state. And we want to make it easy on them to join the party. So 855-462-7292. If you've got the old Anytime hot, Hotline written down, that still works too. But, uh, yep, I just wanted to get that out of the way and welcome the new crowd. We're super excited to uh, have them with us. So. Anyway, you met uh, Heather from Willow Title with me a couple weeks ago, and a super great lady, great company, um, really happy to have them as premier sponsors, Willow Title Services. But we talked about their um, headshot happy hour, and if you're a real estate agent and you're still carrying around a business card with that big, gigantic, aqua-netted beehive from 1987 on that card, and you look nothing like that anymore... Um, Check this out. They're having a headshot happy hour. So you can swing by their place mo this Monday, the 8th, from 4 until 6 p.m. And there's a donation for the headshots. They've got a professional photographer coming out. They've got food and drink, and it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a true happy hour. But uh, you'll get your professional headshot updated, and the donations go to the food bank. So she's out there doing more good work in the community. And whether you're, I don't know, I see a lot of headshots, insurance agents, um, financial planners. If your mug is on your business card, it may be time to update that picture. So check out uh, Headshot Happy Hour this Monday at Willow Title and give them a call if you need more information. It's at their offices in Boynton. They're, set, they're setting it all up down there, but you can call them at 561-737-1630. So super excited that they're doing that. I always love when uh, people give back to the community. So on with the show. You know, we always get started with the headlines. And, you know, interestingly enough, there wasn't a, ten, a ton of headlines this week that I could poke fun at, but I did find something interesting. So uh, you occasionally hear me reference my friend Brian Stevens, who runs the National Real Estate Post. He's like the, um, uh, not Dan Aykroyd. Hey, Dom, who's the other guy that everybody likes? Um, the Chive guy. Not Dan Aykroyd, but he was in... Um, Groundhog Day. Uh, gosh, I'm struggling. Somebody, somebody, uh, anyway, I'll think of it here in a minute, and I'm embarrassed that I don't remember his name, but uh, Brian reminds me of him. You know, you can almost smell a little bit of yesterday's hangover uh, when you're watching. Bill Murray? Bill Murray. Yes, I'm sorry. Thanks, Tom. Man, I'm getting older. It's uh, I'm getting a slow start this morning. But yeah, so Brian always reminds me of the Bill Murray of real estate news. He is one cool dude, sometimes cynical, but super cool guy. So he um, he published a report earlier this week that the cost of living, like we're getting pinched here, right? We feel it um, all over the place. But in San Diego County, they're really getting slammed. And this is going to interest you and maybe scare you. But uh, people are relocating from San Diego County to Tijuana, Mexico, and it's frightening because there are travel alerts 
for Tijuana, Mexico. The news is telling Americans not to go because they average seven murders a day. The drug cartels are running the streets. Um, Not my words. This is the California news. And it's a super dangerous place, yet you have people from San Diego County moving back. I guess that's one advantage to open borders. (laughs) The Californians can move to Mexico. But it's interesting because this is what really shocked me. That It got me thinking, okay, if somebody's that priced out of their market that they want to move to Tijuana. Ooh, did you see that? Want to move to Tijuana. Um, We did a little research. So the average home value in San Diego is just over a million. Didn't surprise me. California, right? Super expensive. We're on our way there. But the average individual's income is only $38,500. It's probably not a lot different than we're seeing here. So it's going to take a family of, I don't know, five or six earners, depending on what their other debt load is, to even qualify to buy a single house. So when you start to factor all that in, and these are bona fide news reports about Americans relocating and renting uh condos and townhouses in homes down in uh, Tijuana, Mexico, because you can't buy, but you can get a long-term lease. We looked a little bit further and see that the average property value in Tijuana is just $100,000. So that kind of blew me away that um, pricing has gotten so expensive in San Diego that the citizens are braving seven murders a day in Tijuana and uh, Viva Mexico. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of frightening. I thought it was interesting, and um, I'll post Brian's article to the Facebook page because it is an interesting It's an interesting article. And if you want to go to the Facebook page, just hit Facebook and search The Mr. Mortgage Show. We always put a ton of data there every day, and any data set you hear us reference on the show will be there too. So one other interesting piece of news, I was in a, in a group conversation with – real estate agents, which prompted me to Google an article that was actually originally published in the Reader's Digest. And it was titled Crazy Things That Real Estate Agents See. And there were some interesting things in there. And, you know, I think the common theme, the most crazy thing that kept popping up was, you know, naked homeowners. So people were walking in on owners in compromising positions. And I'm not going to go in, we'll keep it PG-13 for the radio, But definitely some freaky things were witnessed. And um, one of the conversations I had around that article was quite interesting. A lady shared with me that she was showing an investment property. She had listed an investment property for the landlord. And the tenant knew when the property sold that he was going to have to move. Now, this is a big fella. She describes him as quite a large man. Um, The first time she showed the property... He was just wandering down the hall towards the living room naked, unapologetically. And, you know, naturally they left. Well, it happened a second time and she was embarrassed. And she said, you know, apparently he's not getting the uh, notifications that we have a showing, you know, whatever day it is, Wednesday at 11. Um, And she can't quite figure this out. Well, the third time it happened, they realized this guy doesn't want the property to sell. And this big fella is just wandering through the house naked to deter the, um, the new owners from from seeing the property. So I'm sure there's a ton of horror stories around what, you know, uh, real estate agents have seen, but I thought that was a a particularly funny one. And I did see something this week on the news about a, uh, it might have been unrelated, but that a roofing contractor tore the wrong roof off of a property. And that uh, made me think of a transaction I was involved in about 20 years ago where the new roof was part of the requirement for closing And they escrowed the money the seller did for the roof to be replaced because it wasn't going to happen until the day of closing. Long story short, it was out in Loxahatchee. And I don't know how familiar you are with the area, but there's sometimes 81st Road, 81st Place, 81st Court. Well, guess what? The address was road and they went to place and they tore the roof off the wrong house. And the, uh, the buyer went out there to see the progress and was quite frustrated and called and yelled at the roofing contractor that no work had been done, only to find out that the neighbors had a roof that had been torn off and dried in. So there were two roofs for the price of one on that one, and uh, that's a story that I experienced myself. So I know 
things can get kind of crazy in this real estate world. So I just wanted to share that. Maybe that gave you a chuckle. If you got a big naked neighbor wandering around the backyard, it might be because he doesn't want the landlord to sell the property. But uh, hey, you hear the music coming up behind me. That means we're going to jump into a short break. On the other side of this break, we're going to share a little more information. We're going to dive into your questions. And I want to throw out the new Anytime Hotline, toll-free 855 462 7292. That's 855-462-7292. We'll be right back. Buying a home can be stressful. Willow Title Services will help you close the deal. Offering tailored services for your unique home buying needs, you'll have a single team member guide you from day one to the day you get your keys. They have a combined 50 years of experience, so trust the closing experts and contact them today. Visit willowtitleservices.com. That's willowtitleservices.com. Willow Title Services is rooted in experience to help you get to closing. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. Hey, it's Mark Eitel, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you heard Ike the announcer give the old Anytime Hotline. Guys, that still works. You can use that. That pushes here also. The uh, 855 number is going to be moving forward as we invite the new listeners from outside the area to the family. So that number is 855 855- Four six two seven two nine two, but the old one works too. If you got it written down or you tattooed it on your forehead, whatever you did to remember it, we thank you for doing that. And that number works too. So, hey, uh, when we jumped into that break, I was talking about uh, Ned, the naked neighbor, and um, there was a couple. I I spent a little more time with him than I expected. There were a couple more things I just wanted to throw out there, and um, one of it, one of them is the interest rates. So. There were three articles in succession on uh, both Thursday and Friday. And for me, it's not confusing because I watch the rates, you know, move in in the real time moment. You know, I'm a data junkie. I've got the charts up. But we saw interest rates are no longer under 5% anymore was one of the articles. Uh, Underneath that was another article that said we had about a half a point move in the last two days. And then there was an article published on Friday that said interest rates are under 5% again. Now, that's super confusing for you if you're not in the business to understand that because all of that seems like contradictory information. And it is. It really is. Um, We closed out in the fives. Uh, We closed the week out in in the low fives. But what happens is the Freddie Mac interest rate report is uh, issued early on Thursday morning. It's either 10 or 11 a.m. I'm not sure. But it's data collected from Friday through the previous Wednesday, or through through Wednesday, and then the report's published on Thursday. The challenge is that most of the reporting sources, and this is all documented, this isn't this isn't me saying this, um, have their data reported on Monday. So it's it's a it's a lagging um, indicator. So rates move every day a little bit. 
Um, so it can be confusing and sometimes as much as a quarter point. And I think that's what happened this week. We saw rates pull back a little bit and then we saw them kind of drift back up into the low fives. And there was uh, one trading day where they were under 5% and the Freddie Mac reports, not incorrect. You can still get a rate under 5%, but look to the far right and you'll see that there's about 1% uh, or one point fee in origination or discount points to buy that rate down. But all of that super encouraging news because, you know, it wasn't too long ago we were seeing rates, you know, tickle six and just break over six with certain loan programs on that June move and the news surrounding the move that the Federal Reserve made. So I just wanted to throw that out there. I published that to the Facebook page. It's called Critical Cliff's Notes for today's mortgage rate. And Cliff explains all of that in there so you can understand. And I posted the charts too so you can see the weekly movement and just know that, you know, we're in a real time world now. Everybody's carrying around the the latest news in their pocket. And anything that's published is often, you know, at least a day or two old just for the, you know, because of the necessary steps to get it to the air. So that's what's going on interest rate wise. It's all super encouraging because we have seen a little pullback and some stabilization. So people are exhaling and um, there's a lot of good news in the market right now. So anyway, I'm not going to belabor that. I just wanted to explain it. And that article is in the Facebook page, which is the Mr. Mortgage Show at Facebook. Go to Facebook, search the Mr. Mortgage Show. So let's get to questions. I see Dom's got a few over there. So I want to throw it over to him and see what he, what, what we've got teed up. Jeff is asking, I'm thinking of getting an equity line to pay off my car and some credit cards, then doing a refinance later to roll it into one mortgage when rates come down. What do you think about this idea? Hey, Jeff. Wow. That, my friend, um, I get what you're doing, and I commend you for being that super creative, but um, I just mentioned rates are in the low fives right now, so the equity lines are typically... Well, not typically. They're all based on pr the prime interest rate. And then depending on your credit score and depending on the um, amount of equity that you're taking, it could be as little as prime minus three quarters of a point. Uh, I've got a friend at the at the local bank here. That's what their program is. It's an amazing program. Um, or it can be prime plus a couple of percent. So it's not uncommon for me to see equity lines being quoted right now between you know, 4.75 and even, you know, low sevens, depending on your credit score. So with that logic, with rates being in the fives and equity and equity um, interest rates, equity line interest rates already being in the high fours at best, um, or maybe four, I don't, I like what you're doing, right? You're saying, let me grab the low interest of the equity line and wait for rates to come back down and then roll that into even lower interest. But man, that's a lot of assuming. You're assuming, number one, that equity line rates are going to stay comfortable. And there's a very good chance in September the Fed's going to move again. Now, I know we got a lot of reporting data between now and then. So it might be a, a small move and there may be no move, but. Nonetheless, there's a good chance that um, equity line rates are going to go up from here. And there's also equally a good chance that mortgage interest rates may continue their upward pressure. So I commend your creativity. I just don't know that it's going to work out in your favor because what happens if you do that and equity, rate, equity line rates jump, but so do mortgage rates? I don't know that you saved yourself anything. And then God forbid some of the... Um, the uh, fear mongers are right out there and property values pull back down a little bit. Will you have enough equity for the cash out refi at that point anyway? So food for thought. I mean, my personal opinion is bird in a hand is better than two in a bush. If you can roll that into, you know, a fixed rate payment over a long period of time. And if your goal is truly just to lower your monthly uh, expenditure, you know, the cash out refi might be the safer way to go because you're not going to worry about where prime goes and you're not going to worry about where housing values go because you can owe more than your property's worth. If your housing values go down, nobody's knocking on the door making you give some of that cash out refi money back. So um, interesting question. If you would like to talk more about it, give us give us a shout off the air. Um, you, the anytime hotline pushes to my office during the week. So I'd be happy to talk you through that. But hey, I appreciate your question. Let's throw it over to Dom for another one. Kim sent this one. I found a house on Zillow. The description says legal ADU, earn extra income. What does this mean? Hey, Kim, that's a great question. So 
ADU is like a new fancy industry term for accessory dwelling unit. And here in our area, for the longest time, we called it a mother-in-law suite or a guest house or, you know, the fancy houses over in Palm Beach and some of the nicer areas in West Palm, they were, um, you know, employee quarters on the property. That's where the house manager lived. It's often you know, a bungalow uh, studio apartment on the property. So I'm guessing that they have a legal ADU. So um, some an illegal ADU would be like a an outbuilding on the property that was converted to living quarters without permitting, doesn't meet zoning requirements. So this is a legal ADU, which means that, you know, it's okay with zoning. And ec- the extra income opportunity part of your question, I'm guessing that there's either a tenant in there or they're letting you know that it's rentable. So it sounds to me like, and again, I have, I haven't seen the property. I'm happy to look at it if you want to shoot it over to me. Um, but my guess would be based on that description that you're buying a single family home with a legal guest suite or efficiency unit on the property that you can rent out for additional income. Hey, which is awesome. And that brings something to mind. Very recently, there was a guideline change for conventional financing that allows ADU, or as we always called it here in the area, guest cottage, income to help you qualify for the mortgage. Previously, they didn't use um, ADU income. And there's a whole host of what has to be in place for it to be classed as an accessory dwelling unit or guest cottage. It can't have you know, the, uh, a door to the main house because then it's part of the main house. But I can walk you through that. Uh, I'll, f- I'll try to find an article around ADU and the specifications and post it to the Facebook page because I think it's super interesting. But it sounds to me like you're buying or looking at a house with the opportunity to rent out the guest room and make a little extra money, which is a really, really good idea because in the past we talked about you know, buying a duplex and using that income or buying a fourplex and using that income. And now the guideline change allows you to do that with, I believe, and I'll look it up. I believe it's a single family and one accessory dwelling unit. So you can't have, you know, an outbuilding converted. And now the garage has been cordoned off and turned into one as well, because now I believe, and and I'll post this to the Facebook page, but I believe that won't work because that's going to be too um, ADUs on the same property. But guys, there are a lot of properties in our area that are set up like that. And you might see them advertised as, you know, multi-generational. And some of them were done to code, which we would call a legal ADU. And some were just cobbled together. So um, it's interesting to see that the trend is moving to get more uh, more people in one property out of necessity because of location and cost. And I think the loan programs are, are catching up and trying to stay ahead of that trend. So, hey, that was a great question. I didn't mean to get off on the ADU um, tangent, but maybe we'll do a segment around that because it's super, super interesting. But you hear the music, that means we're going to run into a break. So we will back, be back in two very short minutes. Buying your home is likely the biggest transaction you'll ever make. With stakes that high, you need certainty. Willow Title Services strives to take the stress away by providing a single point of contact with clear communication, resulting in a painless and positive experience. Willow Title Services has over 50 years in industry leading and closing techniques, rooting them in the experience needed to get you to close. Call Willow Title Services at 561-737-1630 or online at willowtitleservices.com. Here's another five-star review. We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes, I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. 
Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell. You are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And the new toll-free anytime hotline is 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. You don't even have to put a quarter in the uh, telephone booth anymore. 855-462-7292. That's a toll-free number. That's how old I am. I remember actually putting quarters in, actually dimes, actually. That's how old I am. Dimes we put in the telephone booth initially. And uh, there's a lot. Dom probably doesn't even know what a telephone booth is. I doubt he's even seen one. It's kind of funny how times have changed. We've got our telephone booths in our pockets. But uh, anyway, hey, I want to throw one thing out there while I'm thinking about it, because we talk about the Facebook page all the time. You can find us there, Facebook, The Mr. Mortgage Show. Um, Dom, after the show each week, puts the recorded version of it up as a podcast, and that's at MrMortgageRadio.com, MrMortgageRadio.com. There's a full library of all the shows. So if any of these ramblings interest you or uh, you want more of it, just go check out MrMortgageRadio.com. And then I neglected to tell you, if you don't want to call or text that number, you can email your questions by visiting Mr.Mortgage online. Just go to www.Mr.Mortgage. Don't type in a .com. Just type in Mr., then the dot, then mortgage, and boom, there's the website. And there's a contact us link there. Dom's watching the website, too, for email. So... Uh, yeah, that's how you get us on and off the air, and we appreciate all your questions and all your par- uh, participation. And hey, I printed one thing out. I wanted to throw this out. I promised Tanya on my team I was going to share this because she's in the middle of a difficult transaction right now with a client who did not follow these seven rules of things not to do after you apply for a mortgage. And I think it's worth throwing it out there because a lot of people don't think about this. Number one is don't change your job. Don't quit your job in the middle of your mortgage process, even if you think it's a better job, because if it's not in the same field and the the same type of position and the income is, you know, commission instead of salary, it's going to screw everything up. And if you wait too late in the process, we've got to back all the way up and do employment verifications, which involve the HR department for the company. So rule number one. Suck it up, buttercup. Do not quit your job. You've got, you know, somewhere between 20 and 40 days to hang in there. And then, you know, don't quit your job before uh, you close your loan. Don't apply for any new credit. Um, This is an interesting one because I get it. You've bought a new house. You're super excited. You go to Rooms to Go or you go to Ashley Furniture or uh, Bears or wherever you're going to buy your furniture. And you're going to finance it because they've got a zero... Uh, percent interest, you know, super duper special. And you tell the salesman, Hey, uh, my mortgage guy told me, do not apply for any new credit. It's going to hit my, uh, it's going to hit my credit report. And the salesman says, Oh, wait, I promise you it's not your, the new account won't post for 30 days. And that may be true. There is a lag time. Here's the challenge that inquiry posted today. If you went and applied for credit somewhere today, car dealership, Home Depot for appliances, Bears Furniture for furniture, or rooms to go, wherever you are, that inquiry is now on your credit. So just before closing, there's a soft inquiry on your credit to see that there's no new debt, because if there's new debt, it's got to be calculated in your income, and against your income, rather. Then all of a sudden, there's new inquiries. We've got to back you out of that process all the way back into underwriting and make sure that... If there is new debt, you're going to be able to absorb it in your income without pushing your ratios. And we'll go into all that on another another show. But my point is don't apply for new credit. Don't deposit big sums of cash into your bank account because that all needs to be explained. So if you sell that, you know, 68 Camaro that's in the back of the driveway and you go down there and put 30 grand in your checking account, well, we're going to have to verify where that came from. And that's all part of a process that takes time. So if you do that at the last minute 
and you we that we got to back you up and get you through um, uh, underwriting again. So no big deposits in or no big deposits out because when they review your assets, they're looking at that asset position against reserve requirements, ability to close. So if you have the ability to go buy that 68 uh, Camaro that's in your neighbor's yard, you don't want that 25 coming out of your account any more than he wants it going in if either one of you is in a mortgage transaction. So no big purchases and no big deposits. And lastly, don't change your bank account. You know, if you're at Wells Fargo and we verified all your assets at Wells Fargo, don't move them to Bank of America before closing. Just hang in there and keep everything the way it is from application until closing and then move your money how you see fit. So I promised her I was going to share that because um, somebody didn't follow the rules and we had to back them up a step and it's a big race to get them closed. So Anyway, that is all I have on that. Let's throw it over to Dom for your questions. Myra sent the text. I'm an agent. My client's bank is telling them after two weeks in processing that they won't be able to do the loan. They're saying it's a guideline issue. It's a double wide manufactured home. The land is owned. It's a 1984 model. Can you do this deal? How fast could it close? Hey, Myra. So, okay. Firstly, I, I'm absorbing everything that Dom said and and I scribbled down a couple notes here. Now, it may so none of this is a guideline problem. I guess is what I'm saying. If I if I have my notes correctly, you have a double wide manufactured home that's 1984, so it's new enough. It's a double wide. Some lenders have overlays to their guidelines which don't allow them single wides, but double wides are okay, but it, but actually the guideline will allow single or double. Um, we do either. And you're saying the land is owned. So as long as they're buying the land and the home, um, I don't see a guideline issue here. It could be that the lender has an overlay. And and we've talked about it before. And you know what? Go to Mr. Mortgage Radio. Myra, you know what I mean. But if you're curious out there, if the rest of the listeners are curious what an overlay is, there's a Daily Dose podcast episode about overlays um, on the MrMortgageRadio.com uh, website. An overlay is a temporary restriction, usually more stringent, always more stringent rather than the guidelines. So they lay on top of the guidelines. That's why they're called an overlay. And the 1984 age might be an overlay for this particular bank um, because some of them have a 20-year age overlay, although the guidelines, the, the guidelines for conventional and FHA loan pro- and VA, um, require the unit to be newer than uh, July of 1976. So as a rule of thumb, I say 1977. So it's newer than 77. It's a double wide. You own the land. I don't see a guideline issue here. So to answer the second part of your question. If it's an FHA transaction and the appraisal is transferable, this can move fast, you know, days. If it's a conventional loan program or a VA program is going to require a new appraisal, then it's the time of the appraisal. And right now we're getting appraisals back in about six days. So I don't know a lot of the moving parts. This is a fantastic question. And thank you, first of all, for bringing it to me. And I'd love to talk to you about this one off the air. But if they're two weeks into the process, I would guess logic kind of dictates there's probably about two weeks left in the closing date. I'm open to jumping in because if all of the boxes tick, the good thing is they're this far into the process. They probably got all their paperwork together already. It would be a quick, you know, one look over it, over it all to see if it's doable. But I think you could get it done in probably about 10 or 12 days, and that would be Uh, a new appraisal if necessary. If that appraisal is transferable, then we're off and running. So I hope that helps. Thank you so much for that question. And um, hey, Myra, if you need a new headshot, if you've got that puffy Aquanet hair that I was talking about in the opening segment, go check out the headshot happy hour down at Willow Title. Um, But yeah, thanks for that question. Uh, You hear the music coming up behind me. We're going to run into a short break. Uh, After this break, we're going to get to more to your more of your questions. So we'll be back in two short minutes.
New to South Florida and ready to sit down roots with a new home? Willow Title Services makes closing a smooth, painless, and positive experience. With individual service for each buyer's needs, Willow Title Services has a combined 50 years plus of experience with industry-leading closing techniques. Call Willow Title Services today at 561-737-1630. That's 561-737-1630. Online at willowtitleservices.com. Willow Title Services is rooted in experience to help you get to closing. Here's another five-star review. As a realtor, I have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from, but I prefer to work with Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. In this crazy market, there is no room for error, especially on the mortgage side. Mark's team moves fast, keeps everybody in the loop, and makes things happen. They always give my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process. When you're considering a lender, I encourage you to talk to Mark Itell and the Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back, and I just peeked out the window, and there is no sign of Ned the Naked Neighbor, so it looks like I'm getting out of here okay today. So, hey, um, that was a great question, Myra, and I again, I wanted to thank you for it, and I'm not going to revisit it, but I just uh, wanted to say a second thank you for that. Well, wait a minute. That was a third thank you. I'm going to stop saying thank you and throw it over to Dom for another question. Ben is asking, we looked at a house near Tampa. It's previously had a sinkhole, but it's been fixed. Can we get a loan on a property like this? Hey, Ben. Um, wow, Mr. Courageous. <laughs> how big was the sinkhole and how close was it to the house? Um yeah, so here's the thing. You can absolutely get a loan on that property. The um, The trick is going to be the insurance, and it's not a problem. It's There's just some extra steps. So you mentioned that it's been fixed, and there's a uh, reme- remediation process. I stumbled over that, but you're going to want the sinkhole remediation paperwork to show that it was done correctly, the engineering reports. every You'd want that anyway. You're not going to want to buy a property with a sinkhole that somebody just filled with sand. Um, but if that process was done correctly and the engineering reports uh, indicate that it's it's good to go, um, then the insurance uh, is no longer an issue. I don't know if there's going to be a higher insurance rate on it if it's classed as additional risk. And I can ask uh, one of my preferred uh, insurance partners that question. I just don't know off the top of my head. But I do know that if you can get insurance on it, you can get a mortgage on it. So I hope that helps. That's a uh, very interesting question. And I'd love to know how that works out for you. It sounds like you're in the middle of this one or about to uh, take the plunge on it. If you have questions on the mortgage side, give me a shout. i be happy to, to answer any of those, but I'd love to know if you end up closing on it, if it was an issue. And if you got some before and after pictures of that sinkhole, I'd like to see that too. But uh, anyway, let me throw it over to Dom for another question. Jessica sent a text. Is there a rule of thumb for how much equity we need to qualify for a reverse mortgage? I'm asking for my mom. Hey, Jessica, that's a fantastic question. Um, There's not a hard and fast rule of thumb because your mom's age has a lot to do with the reverse mortgage qualification, not the qualification process. Let me back that up. The amount of available equity, equity to her. So The more equity that you have and the older that you are, the more money that you're going to get. But to try to at least give you some type of, you know, decent answer to that question, some type of rule of thumb, if she's got 50% equity, there's a good chance that she's going to be okay 
um, you know, with the reverse mortgage. But the reverse mortgage space is something close to my heart. So if you've got questions about that, I'd love to talk to you. But usually around 50 percent equity and um, and you'll be OK for the reverse mortgage. But if you or mom have questions, just give us a shout during uh, the week. And I'll be happy to answer them for you. And you can use the new Anytime hotline during the week, too, which is 855-462-7292. Or just uh, check out www.mr.mortgage and our contact us links there. You can give us a quick email and I'll get back to you. But thank you for that, Jessica. Dom, what else do we have? Linda sent an email. I read the government raised interest rates last week, but I'm seeing ads for rates in the 4 to 5% range. Is this a scam? Hey, Linda, no, that's not a scam. Um, so the 4% part, depending on you know wh- whether it's a 15 or 30 year, you're going to want to see what fees are associated with that rates. But I touched on that a little bit ago that um, you know we're seeing interest rates with no origination, no broker, no discount fees in the fives. So it's most likely a you know legitimate advertising. The lower the rate, the higher the fees. Um, you'll want to check that part of it out. Remember that old CarMax commercial where they took the big, long balloon, the kind of balloon that you twist into like a balloon dog or whatever, and he wrote on the one side fees and on the other side price? Well, in this analogy, you would write fees on one end of the balloon and interest rate on the other. And if you squeeze the fees down to nothing, the side of the balloon that represents the interest rate gets a little bit bigger. But if you squeeze the interest rate down smaller, the fee side of the balloon gets bigger. That's kind of how it works. So that 4% interest rate might have some discount or origination points associated with it. But the Federal Reserve moving the overnight rate up three quarters of a point did not have a direct impact on mortgage rates. And the two aren't directly correlated. Um, So great question. I understand the confusion. And I hope that balloon animal reference helped answer it for you. But uh, yeah, if you need us uh, to answer more questions around that or want to have a deeper conversation, uh, just give us a shout during the week. So thanks for that. Let me throw it over to Dom for another one. Chris is asking, is there a maximum number of properties I can buy with the landlord loan I hear you talking about? Hey, Chris, uh, thank you for listening to me talking about the landlord loan. Um, So to answer your question, 20, um, and that's a pretty good number of properties for a lender to be okay with. So up to 20 properties uh, financed with this particular loan uh, program is the limit that we have. There may be more or less with other lenders. And for some of you who don't know what the landlord loan is, that's the loan program that allows you to use the income from the property to cover the debt of the mortgage. You don't need additional profits. You can have you know $5,000 in rental income and $5,000 in principal interest taxes and insurance. If you're buying, you know, a a four unit property, that math might work out. But if the rental income covers the debt, at least a one-to-one ratio, it's considered cash flowing. And if you can verify assets and you have decent credit, boom, you're a landlord. So to answer your question, Chris, you can do 20 properties with the landlord loan. And for everyone else, that quick explanation is how the landlord loan works. So, and it's a great loan prop, 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 prop. See what I did there? <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm like Bugs Bunny. Great loan program. So if, if that's a, at all of interest to you, it's a great loan program for a first time landlord or for a seasoned landlord to not have to divulge a bunch of income and go out there and uh, buy some investment property. So thanks for that question. Randall sent this text. My uncle will sell me his property and hold a second mortgage so I don't have to put money down. Will this work? Hey, Randall, that's a great question. So it may work. It may work in the sense that um, if you disclose the second mortgage and the CLTV, which is combined loan to value. So let's say your first mortgage is the mortgage you qualify for is 80% and your uncle's going to hold a 10% second mortgage and you put 10% down, if you qualify to carry that 90% debt, you're going to be okay. In theory, you could go all the way to 100%. The challenge is that first lien position is going to dictate what the maximum combined loan to value is going to be allowed on that property. And it's unlikely that it's going to be more than, you know, 90 or 95%. So you're going to you're most likely going to have to bring some money to the table. If you're talking about it in the sense that it's a secret second that's not disclosed, then it's not going to work because, um, yeah, those cowboy days are long, long gone. Everything's full disclosure, and you're going to need that 
payment to your uncle factored into your debt and then that additional leverage on the property um, signed off on, if you will, by the first mortgage uh, position. So it may work to a degree, but I don't think it's going to work to 100% financing. Now, what he could do is gift you some equity uh, if he's willing to do that to help you be in a position that you have no money out of pocket. But it's, you know, it's he's not getting uh, 100% of the value for the property in that instance. So it sounds like there's a lot of moving parts there. I'd love to talk to you more about it because you might be able to roll in there with an FHA loan and, um, you know, qualify for 96.5%, and then he just gifts you the rest. In that instance, he would uh, only be be out 3.5% of the property. And, you, I mean, there's closing costs involved, so obviously a lot more to discuss here. But there might be a way to legally do it and get you close to your goals. So, hey, give us a shout about that off the line, uh, off the air at the Anytime Hotline, 855-462-7292. I'd be happy to learn more about it and see if I can't walk you through that. We're going to be right back after this short break to take more of your questions. Thank you. Buying a home can be stressful. Willow Title Services will help you close the deal. Offering tailored services for your unique home buying needs, you'll have a single team member guide you from day one to the day you get your keys. They have a combined 50 years of experience, so trust the closing experts and contact them today. Visit WillowTitleServices.com. That's WillowTitleServices.com. Willow Title Services is rooted in experience to help you get to closing. Here's another five-star review. We kept our business above water with credit cards during the pandemic. I'm glad we did. Business is better than ever. But I didn't want to be a slave to those credit card payments. I called Mark about the REC loan he advertises. Long story short, we did a REC refinance and paid off everything, even the car. Now we only have the mortgage payment. We're saving a bunch every month. Yes, we are happy to recommend Mark and the Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show, where we do our best each week to answer all your questions, real estate and mortgage related, and give you the info that you need to go out there and make better decisions for you and your family. If you like what you're hearing and you want more of it, Check out MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Dom puts all of the uh, recorded versions of the show up there as well as the Daily Dose podcast. You can go to Facebook and find us at The Mr. Mortgage Show on Facebook. Just go to Facebook and search The Mr. Mortgage Show or check us out online at www.mr.mortgage. Never a .com. Just type in Mr.mortgage, hit enter, and we'll pop right up. So we've had some great questions so far. I'm going to throw it over to Dom and see if we can't get some more in. Tammy's question is, my dad recently died and left me his condo. He had a small mortgage. Is there a way to add me to the mortgage so we don't have to refinance? Hey, Tammy, that is a fantastic question. Um, So maybe, and I say maybe only because some mortgages are assumable and it's going to involve the servicer and whoever's facilitating the estate. So your estate attorney because I, and it's my opinion, and I might, I might be wrong, the attorney might be able to correct me on this, but if the mortgage is assumable, you may be able to assume the mortgage from the estate and not have to go through the refi process. 
Um, most of the time, people just do a refinance into their own name. But I love that you're trying to be cost effective with this. And if dad's got a low balance and a great rate and it's a assumable mortgage, it might work. But that's a better question for the attorney. But I do know that there are, um, especially if it's an older mortgage, there's a good chance. Well, not a good chance. There is a chance that it may be an assumable, uh, assumable mortgage. Hope that helps. But let me throw it over to Dom for another one. Nick left a message. I looked on your Facebook page, but can't find the free credit report service you talked about last week. Can you share that again? Nick, what were, what? Oh, wait a minute. We were talking about Credit Karma. Credit Karma. Somebody called in with a Credit Karma question. Um, yeah, go to Credit Karma with a K, K A R M A dot com. And um, I'll post it to the Facebook page. I don't know that I thought to do that last week, but it's a free credit report monitoring service where you can get updates on your score, you can see your outstanding accounts. It's quite useful, um, actually, from a consumer standpoint to manage your credit. But just beware that the credit report number that you see on Credit Karma is not the same number that your mortgage company sees. So when we pull credit, you know, if you're a 705 on Credit Karma, you might be a 680 or 690 with your mortgage credit report. And that's a whole long explanation why, why they're different. I'm happy to explain it to you. If you'd like to learn more about it, but yeah, creditkarma.com. It's an amazing um, free app that you can download on your phone and just monitor your own credit, which everybody should be doing anyway, with all the hacking that's going on out there right now in this world. You definitely need to, to keep your credit score um, up and protect your your personal credit. So, hey, that was a great question. And while I'm thinking about it, I want to go, go ahead and just ask you to check out the uh, Facebook page. We'll post all that information up there. And if you're finding any of this useful, share that Facebook page with your friends. Um, if anybody that you know is having mortgage or real estate questions, they're wondering, is it a good time to buy or sell or refinance? Hey, please introduce them to the show. They can find everything at MrMortgageRadio.com or the Facebook page, uh, The Mr. Mortgage Show on Facebook, or as always, www.mr.mortgage. So I uh, just appreciate the share. We're always trying to build the audience and answer as many questions as we can. And let's try to squeeze one more in if we have time for it. Here's a text from Drew. I almost have my credit cards paid off. I'll close them once they're paid. How long after all are paid will my credit score update? Do not close them. So it's so pay them off. Your balances will come down, but don't close them because age of credit is a scoring factor. So, Drew, don't close those credit cards out. Pay them down to zero. That's going to uh, give you a bump in your score, and it's usually whatever one reporting cycle is. So somewhere between you know 45 days, 60 days, you should be good to go. But don't close those accounts out if you want to build your score. So, hey, you hear the music? You know what that means? We're wrapping up another week of the Mr. Mortgage Show. We had a blast with you today. I'm peeking out the window. There's no naked Ned. So, Mrs. Mortgage, I will be home safely. And uh, thank you all for your participation. If you need us during the week, use that number, 855-462-7292. Visit the website, www.mr.mortgage, no.com, just mr.mortgage, or check out mrmortgageradio.com. Dom and I will be back here, same bat time, same bat channel next week. Have a great week. That's a wrap. Join Mark Itell next week for more thrilling edge of your seat discussions about real estate and mortgages right here on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Buying a home can be stressful. Willow Title Services will help you close the deal. Offering tailored services for your unique home buying needs, you'll have a single team member guide you from day one to the day you get your keys. They have a combined 50 years of experience. So trust the closing experts and contact them today. Visit willowtitleservices.com. That's willowtitleservices.com. Willow Title Services is rooted in experience to help you get to closing.